Olivero. Uh, title of the uh, research Palestine and local categories. Differences between terminology used in Brazilian and geographic production and local Palestine categories. Dr. Rafael Oliveira is post doctorate researcher at the University of Sao Paulo, PhD in anthropology from the Federal University Barana, and currently he conducts research on the Brazilian academic bibliographic production that has Palestine as central then. Welcome, Oliver, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say that it's such a great pleasure to be here and an honor. Um, to me, be, uh, being here in Palestine, sharing a little bit of my research, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. So, um, for years, as well as during this conference, we have been hearing a lot about dialogues <coughs> involving the Global South. But, what happens when the South talks about the South? For my presentation, I will use some reflections on Brazilian academic productions about Palestine to address this question. My story with this subject starts almost 10 years ago, when I first came to Palestine. And I am going to tell you this short story. Um, so my graduation was in music, and the first research that I did in Palestine was on musical productions and its uh, political uh, uses. So talking to a musician, a friend of mine, uh, in a coffee shop in the Ramallah, he asked me this question. Are you also talking to the musicians, uh, to the 48 musicians or musicians from 48? And for his surprise and some laughter, my answer was no. I'm doing an interview with young people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, quickly, he responded to this. And he said, no, my family is from Haifa. I'm from Haifa. I'm from 48. He didn't need to say any other word. I got it. And also I got that we uh, don't have access to these local categories that inform daily life and are informed by daily life in Palestine. Um, so this became uh, uh, a very interesting topic for me to think about. And so ever since, uh, so I've been coming back and forth from Brazil, between Brazil and Palestine for almost a decade, but also being based in Ramallah now, it's my fourth year. And also I teach music in a, in a conservatory in Al-Kamanjati and I used to teach music also in the Mahad Edward Said, living in Ramallah, based in Ramallah but, uh, but teaching in the Jerusalem branch. So I could observe the transit or the daily transit of uh, not only Palestinians but also mainly Palestinians uh, between different spaces in Palestine. So uh, now I'm going to... Um, approach the question. So, what makes uh, 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 my interest are on the daily uses of local categories. And mainly, at, le at least for this presentation, uh, 48 al dakhil or inside, this part of Palestine that are not very uh, much referred to in, in uh, academic pu publications outside of uh, Palestine. And this is important to think about. And um, so also I would um, understand that this could come, at least when we, we speak about Brazilians or Latin Americans in general, but especially Brazilians, uh, a lack of extended field work as an ethnographic support. Of course I'm talking as an anthropologist. Um, so the presence of Brazilians, uh, researchers in local, I could, uh, for more than one year, I could uh, quote maybe one in one person, and she's here in this audience today. It's Danny. And uh, after Danny, I came. And of course, we have this new generation coming, and it's very important to be here. But the longer we stay, the deeper it goes uh, when it comes to the local constructions and uses of categories, mainly the space and its uh, uh, identitary pairs. 
So the Brazilian Academic Bibliographical Production on Palestine and Palestinians is uh, the theme of this uh, uh, presentation. I will just introduce it very briefly and then I'll uh, do some comments on it. So uh, what I did, or what I've been doing, is to look for, initially, uh, scientific articles and master's dissertations and doctoral theses. Uh, so, so far, um, we, we have, I'm, I'm, gonna get, I'm not going to get stuck on the numbers, but of course for the final research, for the final paper, sorry, I will be based on these criteria that are, are described there. So, to be academic production published in the form of master's dissertations or dissertation or doctoral thesis, to be published in Portuguese, to be a publication written by a Brazilian researcher linked to a Brazilian public university, to have Palestine and not uh, Palestinians in the refuge or immigrants and stuff, because this is a huge subject also in Latin America. Uh, so to have Palestine as its central point, considering its local context and social political dynamics, and to be uh, published in the last decade. And this is important for me to point out, because uh, we have a huge uh, community of researchers that are doing uh, great jobs on, on um, diaspora, migration and refuge. This are just, so I'm gonna not get a stay here, but this is the pressure that, that I have, just to show you guys that considering the criteria, we don't have that much. Uh, a total of worksheets that are considering the previous criteria is like only 130. Total thesis 21 without and with candidates, total dissertations uh, 53, candidates uh, thesis and dissertations, they together uh, are 19, it's not that much. So, um, appearance of local categories in the Brazilian academic bibliography. Field work, when it occurs, is clearly of short duration and they make it clear in the papers. Um, so this is one of the things that I can uh, observe. And works that have Palestinian dynamics as a research topic have so far not responded to local terminological imperatives. So having that said, I'm gonna uh, do like a small uh, reflection on this. So uh, to me, the global north is not a concrete uh, and tangible entity, but it is, as I agree, a set of values constructed and perpetuated throughout centuries of colonial processes. The global north is part of the construction of a structure of, the, of dominance, which includes terminologies. With this, I, came up, uh, I come up with the following question. Do researchers respond to the local imperatives in Palestine or deliberately choose their terms? This, considering that they had access to the local Palestinian categories of space and its identity repairs. This contributes to a difficulty in defining Palestine as a place, as it is. This is due, in my uh, view, to an imperative terminological status quo in references to Palestine. Uh, uh, in references to Palestine, so it comes to what I, 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 I seek to call a rigid binomial named Palestine versus Israel. Thus, while is while Israel is obvious, Palestine seems to be not that much. This leads us to think that even if the productions comes from the South, the dialogue exists as long as it's placed as it is placed in terms in the terms of the North. And the North needs to give in order to accept uh, to give up in order to accept other terms and thus be able to break with the terminological status quo. And in this sense I would say that um, this agony that we eventually find when it comes to the definition of Palestine in academic papers, um, this agony, to me, it doesn't seem to appear when it comes to the term Israel as a place. When Palestine is a place, as we find in, in Palestine. And this is important for me to, to, to point out. And, uh, um, so, I would totally relate, I'm not afraid of relating this, uh, the term 
the, the neutrality that is eventually claimed in academic words are more connected to a non-neutral place. And because if Israel is obvious and Palestine is not that much, we are talking about a status quo. And this status quo, this terminological status quo, might, uh, may be Israeli. And this is something that we have to fight uh, with the uses of terminologies in our uh, publications. And because uh, when it comes to this uh, other categories, like instead of uh, Palestinians from 48 or, or uh, the Fawia or, or, or these other categories that appears here with these uh, uh, different spaces that composes Palestine as an, an, an only place. Uh, so we have, just as an example, we have uh, Palestinians from 48, Palestinians uh, uh, from, from the West Bank or Gaza or Jerusalem or even the names of the cities. So uh, from Nablus or Nazareth or, or, or Akka or, or in any ways. But in these publications, and not only Brazilians, but uh, Brazil's because it's uh, my, my, my focus on my research, but not only Brazil, like the way that mainly Palestinians, especially from inside, they appear are, it's like you all know very well, like Arabs from Israel or Israeli Arabs or these other technologies that are accepted as neutral. They are not neutral, in my point of view. The status quo in this sense is winning a fight that we have to fight back by taking it seriously the local Palestinian categories and putting them in the first place. Uh, just a curiosity about myself. My favorite band is a rock band from the US. The name is Pearl Jam. <laughs> and they have a song and they say some words when spoken they cannot take and, uh, be taken back. But, in my opinion, sorry Pearl <laughs> they can be succeeded uh, by other vocabularies, also components of terminological power relations. In this case, it's not just a question of provincializing Europe, as the Indian uh, thinker Chakrabarti brilliantly proposes, but of subverting the uses of the terms seeking to privilege those whose existence has been overshadowed or over-intentionally erased by dominant imperatives. These terms have not been erased and they need to be brought to light. Um, I don't know how much time I still have. Okay. Before I come to the end of my presentation, I would like to state that I am aware that the Discussions, the, the discussion that I have presented here might be obvious to Palestinians and others uh, familiar with such terms. However, it is not all uh, uh, obvious to Brazilians, no matter how expert they might be when it comes to Palestine. Here lies the importance of reflections on the use of appropriate terms by international researchers in general. We must also take into consideration a basic anthropological premise. People don't think, they know. And here I direct my speech to Brazilian researchers and others who might feel interested in the subject. Palestinians don't think they are Palestinians, they know they are Palestinians. Palestinians don't think they have a single Palestine, they know it exists. So in this terms, I would say that it's not about naming Palestine. Palestine shouldn't be named, in my point of view, and there's only one reason for that. It is already named, and its name is Palestine. Thank you.